This video is brought to you by Skillshare. When I go with confidence, when I go all the way around, I keep saying, take a sip on it, take a trip on it. When I go, you can go slow. Wind it up on night. Hopefully, when you get the basics of studio photography, that is when you are done watching this video or photography in general, I believe that the next step is going to be of you bringing your visions to life. And that is where today's sponsor, Skillshare, comes in. It is by no accident that they have specific courses about photography, marketing, uh, videography, basically anything that you can think of, there is a course like that on Skillshare. You guys know I go on Skillshare and look for courses that I believe will add value to your craft. And there is a course by Sophia Carey, which I believe is a perfect follow-up to this video that you are currently watching. And the course I'm talking about is called Portrait Photography 101, Transforming Your Vision into a Workflow. She shows you how to find inspiration. You know I'm all about that. She shows you how to look for locations, how to scout for models. And even when you are done with that and done capturing your images, she shows you how to edit with a consistent theme. You guys know I've been talking about that for a very long time on my channel, but she elaborates on that even more. One other thing I love about this course is that it's under one hour, but the value that you get out of it is just insane. I think you should really take this class because there's a lot that you will learn but don't take my word for it. I would always ask you guys to use your one month free access to do your own research on Skillshare. And then you can come back and let me know what you think about this recommendation that I made or maybe other videos that you guys found as well. But here's the best part. If you are genuinely interested in joining Skillshare and becoming a member, then head on into my description box and use my special link because the first 1,000 of you, my friends, who use that link gets one month free trial of Skillshare. It's that simple. Click the link in my description box and while you're there, you can do your own research, as I mentioned, about classes concerning photography, creative writing, marketing, and productivity. Thank you, Skillshare, for making this possible. <laughs> anyway, guys, today we are doing a basic studio photography setup. I know that most of the videos I've been doing is almost like completely set up, right? But I just want you guys, you know, just, just take it a little bit slower. Start with the basics. If you are shooting in your room or you have an empty space and you want to build your own studio, I want to go over the, you know, the things that you need to start, right? So the first thing is if you own the space, right? You can decide not to use these backdrop stands because obviously when you're shooting in a studio, you need something to shoot against. And there are so many things that we are going to go over, just like a few things that you can use as a backdrop for your subjects. But then you need to like find a way to support the backdrop that you plan on using. And I'm using these backdrop stands. They pack down really low. It has a bar across, and then you can hang different types of backdrops on them. So this is a canvas backdrop. It's hand painted, and that is why we have those textures in there. And when you're shooting in the studio, these determine the way your images are going to look. I also have, been using on the channel like this this is just like a bridal satin right these also come in so many different colors you can pick and choose and they're quite affordable i also have this is also another fabric but this i got from kate's backdrop you can see it also has like a very beautiful texture in the middle and they have others that have interesting patterns in there but the only issue with maybe something like this bridal satin is the fact that it can crease and so when you're shooting already i don't know if you can see that there's some creases in there, it means it's going to take like a while for you to get these creases out. But if you want, we also have papers. So this is a seamless paper, also comes in different colors and different lengths. This one I have is quite small. <laughs> so if you have a small space, you can go with stuff like this, especially if you're shooting individuals, you can get like your decent shots out of this, maybe headshots, even full body of an individual, you can get it because it rolls out to be very long. So this covers pretty much what you need, you know, so you like your backdrop stand, the backdrop itself, and the next thing we'll talk about is going to be your lights. So over here, I have a flash head. 
This is the Flashpoint Explore 400 Pro. If you have a speed light, you can use that. These lights can be modified. You can put different modifiers on them to shape the light. But in the studio also, I know that some people use LEDs. So I have an LED here. But for what we are doing today, I'm not going to be using this to capture the images. This is the Aperture 300D Mark II. What I'm using it for is to light up the scene so you guys can see the video. But I know that in the studio also, you can use these lights to light up your subject. The difference between an LED and a studio strobe like this is this strobes, <laughs> it flashes. And that is how you're able to freeze motion and capture your subjects. But with the LEDs, it's constant. And that is like the main difference between them. Nowadays, LEDs are becoming very cheap. And so you can get like very powerful LEDs for a good price. But then, I mean, it's still going to be more expensive comparing it to like a wattage from a flash that is going to be high enough to give you like very huge power to light up your subject. So from there, once you define the light source that you need, you need to modify it. You can shape it with so many things. We have strip boxes. We even have something small like this, which is a seven inch cone. It comes with these lights. They always come with these seven inch cones. So this modifier is going to give you a very harsh light um, because of the size of it, like I, I did. So if I, if I compare the modifier to the size of my subject, you can see that it's very small. We also have soft boxes, and soft boxes are very popular, also very affordable, and these ones give you like soft light because of the way it's designed. So this has an outer buffer, but in there, there's also another fabric that is diffusing the light. And so by the time the light comes out of this modifier, it's very, very soft. Also, if I just put that against my subject, you can see that it is relatively bigger compared to this. So obviously this is going to give you a much softer light. Then also because of the way it's coming out from the softbox, I can even decide not to aim the middle part onto my subject, use the edges and that's what we call feathering. So using like the softest part of the light will reduce hot spots and you know just give you an, or help you get even softer light. So the bigger your modifier is in relation to your subject, the softer the light. And also if you decide to use the edges of the, of the modifier to light your subject, you're going to get even softer light. All right, uh, moving on, we're gonna talk about the camera, right? I'm going to be using my Canon R5 and the Sigma 85mm lens for this. But the thing that we are doing today is we're just using one light and I'm controlling the power of the light with my Godox XT, X1T trigger. So I can just communicate with this strobe remotely. I don't have to walk to the light to adjust the power and stuff like that. So I think this pretty much covers everything that you need to shoot in the studio. Of course, you need a subject. And today we are shooting in the studio with our lovely Aisha. Um, we'll talk about the styling later. <laughs> or let me know how you feel about the styling in the comments down below. And I'll show you who is responsible for it. But yeah, we're shooting with Aisha. Let's just see if we can capture some beautiful studio portraits of Aisha. All right, Aisha, um, just make sure you can just come forward a little bit. Come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. And then, yeah, that's fine. Actually, no, go back a little bit. Yeah, right there, and then move a little bit to your right. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to find like the edge of the softbox that's going to light Aisha up, right? So I'm making sure that like, the middle part, like I mentioned in the beginning, is just going across. And then we're using like the soft parts of that to light her up. So we're going to get some wrap around from the modifier. So actually, let me take a test shot. My camera settings, I mean, it will vary depending on what you're doing, but what I want to do right now is because our backdrop has some textures in there, I want to blur it a bit. So I'll start at f1.8, keep my shutter speed at one over 160 because I want to add a bit of like the ambient light into the shot. Keep my ISO at 100, all right? So let me just take a shot and let's see what we get. 
yeah, already the LED is influencing it, but this is like daylight entering a studio. It's absolutely fine. I'll turn on the strobe. It's in group A, currently at 1 over 64. Take a shot. Boom. Okay. It's looking a little bit too harsh. So what I'll do is, Aisha, just stay where you are and I'll just turn this away and also move it back just a little bit. So with studio shots, when you're doing these things, you have to be precise with your lighting. As soon as I get it to look the way I want, yeah, that looks good. But also just take like half a step away from the light. Yeah, one more, yeah, right there. Let me just take one more shot. But turn your body, yeah, towards the light. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Bring your eyes back, yeah, perfect. Awesome, yeah, I really like the way this looks. Let's grab a few shots. There are a few more things that you can also add to your studio shoots and you can have stools in your studio so that your subjects can sit. Um, let me just put this here. Make sure you're in the same spot. If you have apple boxes, you can use those. You can also be more creative, build your own. I made a carpenter make this for me. Let me see the height. Mm, do you think it should go higher? Wait, let me just raise that up. I don't want the back to show, so I'm just making sure that I'm using a good surface area. Cool? All right. And then one last thing that you can also utilize in your studios are reflectors. These are very cheap and affordable ways of adding an extra light source. It's not really generating its own light. What it's doing is, whatever light that you have on set, just put it on the opposite end and it's going to bounce some of that light back just to open shadows, right? And always have stands that you can use to support these things. Just gonna raise it up. <laughs> yeah, this should be fine. And... Where's my camera? <laughs> okay, so let's just take a few more shots. Let's see what we've done differently. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, you can see the shadows are softer. So I'll just go ahead and just grab some more shots of Aisha. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because the light is coming from the right, yeah, as much as possible. Keep your face in that direction. Beautiful. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, I like, I like that. Just bring your, so keep that pose, just bring your face, yeah. Turn your face more towards me, yeah. 